So I played Minecraft for a hundred-ish days. Not human days, Minecraft days. And I say a hundred-ish because I might have gone over a little bit, but we're not going to talk about that. I've been seeing creators online share their progress playing a Minecraft world for 100 days. And I always think it's really interesting. So this is a challenge that I just wanted to try for myself as someone who's been getting back into the game over the past several months. Right off the bat, if you're looking for someone to do all of the classic, you know, Minecraft things like fight the Ender Dragon and, you know, get full netherite armor, all that sort of stuff, that is not this video. We are here just to chill, relax, take in the stunning new 1.18 terrain generation and see what I can accomplish in 100 days. To start off, I spawned on this island, chopped down some wood, and collected some cobblestone to create starter tools, the basic Minecraft things. I also killed some animals for their meat, and then immediately set off to find continuous land, which honestly was not that hard to find. I actually came across my first cave already, which we'll explore in a little bit, but first I mined this coal and made a fireplace, which is something I've never done in Minecraft before. Um, it's not a new feature or anything by any means but hey, it was new to me. I also murdered enough sheep to make a bed, so I slept through the night, and in the morning, I finished smelting my food, collected some more materials, placed them all in a chest, and went mining. So this is my very first time experiencing a 1.18 cave, and let me just say, they are truly amazing. It's evident how vast Minecraft worlds are with this update. I actually like really enjoyed mining and just discovering new things during this initial caving session. As you can see right off the bat, I mined right down and found a mine shaft. And this is one of those mine shafts with the chains holding it up to the ceiling, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, another thing I noticed is that copper is literally everywhere in this update. So that's also pretty convenient as well. In the mine shaft, I also found a name tag, some other goodies like gold, rails, other Minecraft things. I also discovered glow berries, which I was pretty excited about. I collected a variety of ores in the caves and also discovered this super tight drip Dripstone cave. I forget what the actual name of this cave generation type is called, but I collected a bunch of the dripstone blocks and pointed dripstone. Um, and so I thought those would be cool, you know, building blocks for later. Then I smelted a bunch of raw iron and made full iron armor and tools. So fully decked out here. As I began mining a bit deeper into the caves, I started mining some deep slate, which is definitely one of my favorite, like, caves and cliffs building blocks hands down um and also look at this i found a vein of eight diamonds and i was only on y level three so i was really surprised about that but it was a happy surprise and last but certainly not least i want to show you guys these super open caves they're really interesting looking with these pillars that go from like the floor to the ceiling but I will say that mobs are literally everywhere in these open caves. Like, look how this guy's camping out here. Like, they really just be everywhere. Um, and because these caves are so open, there's not as many places to like corner yourself into to regen health or to hide when you're being attacked. So as you can see, I died here. Um, and yes, I am playing with keep inventory on because listen, life's already complicated video games don't gotta be. These are the goods that I ended up collecting from that caving adventure and I will come back to this chest later to grab my things but first before I did that we're gonna go off and try to find a place to settle down and call home. So I really wanted to create my base in the brand new meadow biome which can be found in between mountains. I had this idea to live like my cottage core dream in a meadow. So we went off and searched for the meadow biome. I actually came across this village along the way, as you can see, so I stole a bunch of their things, and I also tamed a couple of cats. And side note, can somebody please tell me when ocelots just got replaced with their like normal cat form? Like what update was that? I do not remember that, but anyways. <laughs> I continued on foot to find my ideal meadow biome um, and can we just take a moment to appreciate some of the stunning scenery I encountered along the way. Cue the montage. 
Honestly, I never really got when people were like, I don't play certain games because they don't look good or they don't have good graphics. Like, girl, just get you some good mods and we're on and popping. Like, we're good. So, anyways, that's side note. Minecraft can be super pretty. Just get you some shaders. <laughs> I also came across this snowy plains biome, found this village, and guess what? Stole a bunch of their things. You already know. <laughs> These snowy villages are probably my favorite and I know this isn't a 1.18 feature or anything but they're just so cute and I just love them. They're just very aesthetic and cozy. But after that I went over hills and rivers and through yet another village until I found this mountain which I went to explore. Uh, but before we go up there, take a look at this gorgeous dripstone cave. This is so beautiful, this dripstone cave. <gasps> the world generation in 1.18 is really something different. Like how you gonna look at that and tell me that Minecraft has bad graphics? Just get you some shaders, period. <laughs> but after I explored that, this mountain across the pond, it like caught my eye. So I went over there to scope out the surrounding terrain. And then I found this gorgeous meadow biome and y'all, would y'all look at this? Like truly Mojang, well, I guess it's Microsoft now. It's been Microsoft, but they truly popped off with this terrain generation. Like, look at this. So I decided to mark the spot and begin building my starter home. <gasps> Funny! <gasps> okay, wow. <laughs> I'm loving this. Later on in this gameplay, you're gonna see some cool third person time lapses of my builds as I installed the replay mod. For this first build, there's no replay mod because the, the mod wasn't released yet. In the meantime, this is the process of building my starter home. So I will say that this house honestly changes a lot throughout this video, but I basically just started off with this birch in deep slate design. I never really use birch wood on houses and also I just love the deep slate, so I decided to combine the two. Uh, I collected some clay to make a fireplace and also some flower pots because, you know, priorities. <laughs> we like to decorate around here, okay? Also, take a look at this gorgeous view of the lava mountain over the jungle trees. Literally, like, perfection. Like, chef's kiss. But speaking of the jungle trees, I went over there to get some jungle wood, some vines, some cocoa beans, and some bamboo. I went ahead and used that bamboo to make scaffolding, which is another thing I've never done in Minecraft before. Again, not a new feature at all, but super helpful. I went ahead and built that fireplace and started decorating the, the, the place a little bit. So, you know, adding all the little decor items. I also made this super tiny like wheat farm because I decided that I probably need like food at this point. Like <laughs> I was just out here collecting materials and building and then, you know, was simultaneously dying and starving. So I decided I should probably get started with those farms. I herded some sheep and I trapped them in these trap doors. Then we went back to building and decorating. So I made some glass pane windows, decorated with some flower pots, and this is what the interior looks like. Super cute. I love the view of the sunrise. The next day I began to herd some cows because I also figured I probably need, you know, more food. I organized my chest a little bit and honestly I just teleported my other belongings to the new chests. Like I said earlier, life already complicated. Video games don't gotta be. But then after that, I wanted to scope out a location to clear out a staircase. It is a real struggle getting up and down the mountain and like half of my like hunger bar depletes after doing so. Um, I think ideally I wanna make a bubble elevator. I think that'll be cool. Maybe I can do that in the future. Uh, but I went ahead and just cleared out a space for a staircase in the meantime. So I chopped down a load of trees and then here's that area all clear. I started making the staircase up the mountain and boom, replay mod. So this is like, you know, the start of the third person footage. Look at me guys being a real Minecraft YouTuber. Um, <laughs> but I started with this uh, cobblestone. My idea was to kind of have it be like mossy and look kind of overgrown, but I didn't really have as many things at this point in the gameplay yet. So I ran out of cobblestone and ended up using wood stairs. And I am aware that the staircase is very ugly. This is probably the only thing in this world which sole purpose is for practicality and not aesthetics. Um, but 
we'll fix that later, okay? <laughs> so then I went and expanded my wheat farm, which I put at the end of the staircase near the pond. I went back up to the starter home, found out that my sheep escaped from this enclosure that I put them in. In expression of my frustration, I did this and my sticky keys turned on. Uh, and then my recording literally just stopped. <laughs> So that's really unfortunate and at this point I only have my one monitor so I didn't even realize that my like recording paused So here's a little bit of an explanation of what I did and all this footage that y'all did not see um, I started collecting materials for an upcoming cow farm build so I wanted to make a cow farm inspired by Moo Moo Meadows from Mario Kart. So I found a couple of photos from Mario Kart Wii and also Mario Kart 8 that I used as inspiration. I designed it in creative mode and wanted to put it in this survival world. And I thought it was cute because it's like a cow farm. I'm in a meadow biome. It's Moo Moo Meadows, you get it. And yeah, I basically just spent a bunch of time collecting raw materials, so. When it was time for me to start building Moo Moo Meadows, I went ahead and marked this place in my world. And here you can see it much better in the daytime. And then I just placed down a barrel full of building materials and I went ahead and began terraforming. So here's that space all cleared out. And I went ahead and actually placed down the Moo Moo Meadows schematic from the Lightmatica mod. This is what the build will look like in this world when it's all finished. And let's go ahead and start that time lapse. Cue the replay mod. So to begin the, the Moo Meadows build, I can't say that. Try saying that five times fast. Moo Meadows, Moo Meadows, Moo. Okay, anyways. <laughs> So to begin the build, I went ahead and started with the entrance, which had all these fences uh, and lanterns at the front. I placed these two sections of hay bales because, you know, farm stuff. And then I also started on the toad mushroom, which just was made of birch wood, stripped birch wood and red and white wool. And actually, I think in the future, I'm going to put like two banners that look like eyes. So that actually looks like a toad. I literally spent no time trying to figure out how to make looms and how that works. So maybe we'll do that in the future. Um, but this is the overview of the Moo Moo Meadows progress we've made so far. Here's me breeding my cows and my sheep. And after I did that, I went off to go exploring. So I went in the opposite direction of my house. I wanted to look for some spruce and some dark oak wood. Both of these blocks will be used for the remainder of the Moo Moo Meadows build, as well as on my future house. So I found this like beach hill sand area. As you can see, I'm really great at describing terrain, but collected some sand there because I figured, hey, that can be useful. And then later I came across an ice spikes biome. There's this like giant sheet of ice in place of water, which I thought was cool. And then I also found goats. However, you know, some of those caves and cliffs features are kind of annoying, like this powdered snow, which I fell into so many times. Like you can see me panicking here as I fall through the floor. It's actually kind of scary when you fall through powdered snow, like you just be walking my your business do, 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 and next thing you know you're like underground um terrifying but anyways uh i eventually got out <laughs> of the snow and i went to go spot out the goat so here's me up close and personal with the goat i tried to get it to ram into me like it does in the trailer but it didn't maybe i have to like aggravate it but whatever but then i went and collected some spruce wood i made a boat out of that wood i found a goat and then i got the whatever floats your goat achievement which is one of the new ones so you can see me really happy in this in this boat with the goat bars okay anyways <laughs> i continued to collect loads of spruce wood because again i needed that for like builds back at the house I spotted this village in the distance, but before we go raid it, let's check out this ruined nether portal. So all I took from this chest was the obsidian. It had like a couple of pieces, which we'll use eventually when I decide to go to the nether. Um, but that's okay because I stole a load of things from the nearby village, like their lanterns, which I love. Uh, and also this saddle. So I was really excited about that. And I had to take a moment to take in the pretty village scenery. Like y'all look at this this all snowy outside and with the lanterns it's just so pretty but then i was you know rudely interrupted by this 
random thing that started attacking me. I honestly don't even know what this mob is. Like, can y'all tell me in the comments? I never left, never seen this in my life. Anyways, I left the village and went exploring further out. I actually tried boating across the frozen over pond and it's super trippy. Honestly, it's a super incredibly fast method of transportation if you can, you know, like work it correctly, but I found it very difficult to steer. So I continued on foot until I came across this structure, which is another thing I've literally never seen in Minecraft before, but it had like pillager banners around it. So I thought that's probably dangerous. I have terrible armor right now and this is not where I wanna die. So uh, I did take screenshots of the coordinates for future reference, but then I just went off on my merry way. I eventually came across this taiga biome and I found these foxes in the distance. Uh, they kept running away from me though, which was sad. I was really trying to tame this fox because I wanted a baby fox, but uh, the other one disappeared. So I couldn't find it. I was chasing around these foxes with sweet berries for a minute. So I decided to give up, but maybe we'll get a fox in the future. Um, and that pretty much concludes my snowy adventure away from home. We saw some pretty interesting things. We got a saddle, we got spruce wood, we found structures and almost died in snow. Great times, y'all. As I returned home, I continued collecting materials for the remainder of my Moo Moo Meadows build. So I planted and bone mealed a bunch of spruce trees to chop down. I created and mined some white concrete as well as black concrete. I went ahead and sheared and made some black and red wool. And also while I was doing this, I kept getting like run up on by creepers, like literally so rude, very disrespectful. And one unfortunate thing that happened is that I was fighting the skeleton and my cat was blown up by the creeper. Like how rude. And cats are supposed to like uh, scare away creepers. So I was kind of confused of how that happened, but you know, whatever, rest in peace to my nameless cat. Uh, you will be forever missed. But let's get back to the Moomoo Meadows build. So cue the time lapse. Uh, but first I got blown up by another creeper. So let's look at how he, how he came out from the shadows. But okay, actually let's talk about the build now. So I went ahead and started by making this wooden stoop, I guess, slash base of the windmill. And then I went ahead and pra placed down my spruce fences. I can't talk in this voiceover. I don't know what's happening. After that, I went ahead and placed down uh, this black and white checkerboard patterned starting line. Um, I was actually gonna make it lime because that's what the, the color is in Mario Kart Wii, but I wasn't able to find green or lime dye until later. So, um, you know, we'll change that eventually. Uh, I went ahead and then moved on to the deep slate top part of the windmill. Here I am just building it upwards, kind of ending it in like a point, I guess. This wandering trader comes. I actually started trading with it. Look at this creeper pulling up who blew up, killed the trader, and I copped his leads. So that was unfortunate. Um, again, creepers, my arch nemesis. Oh my god. There's some missing holes in the windmill, which I go back and fix later. So here I am just adding, you know, the finishing touches to the final shape of the windmill. I, I do put the blades on the windmill later. I go back and fix that at the end of the video. I went ahead and put some trees into the Moo Moo Meadows area. And that's pretty much how the completed build looks, minus the unfinished windmill. So before we can use this build, we need to go ahead and get our animals in here. So I went ahead and herded my cows and my sheep all the way up from my starter home down to Moo Moo Meadows. And then afterwards, I decided that I wanted to redecorate my starter home. So I went ahead and changed the full exterior from the birch planks to stripped birch logs. Um, and then I just added some random stuff on the inside, like barrels, flower beds, window shutters. Um, I decorated the fireplace, added a podium, put a little, you know, food on the counter, added a carpet, you know, just making things look pretty. Um, so that's, that's what the redecorated starter home looks like all finished. Um, oh, and also another creeper encounter because literally they can't get enough of me. 
But now let's go on to building something else. So this portion of the video was actually live streamed on Twitch, hence the face cam you see on the side. And this is where I started collecting materials for my house build. So I designed a super aesthetic cozy cottage in creative mode, which I then copied and replicated in this survival world using the Lightmatica mod again, just like I did with the Moo Moo Meadows build. So here are all the materials I collected during that stream. I also ended up taming a donkey, and I also traded with this wandering trader for lime dye, which I planned to use for the Moo Moo Meadows like checkered starting line. And let me know in the comments if you were at the live stream at any point. I appreciate y'all. But anyways, here's the official overview of mostly all the materials I ended up collecting. I say mostly because uh, I ended up getting more along the way. But now let's get to building. Well, technically terraforming. And also with the new shader pack. I really like this one. So yeah, I went ahead and cleared out this area at the top of the cliff here. Someone in my Twitch chat helped me pick out this location for my house that overlooks the super pretty hill in the back. As you can tell, I, you know, really am obsessed with this terrain. <laughs> so I went ahead and placed my house down in Lightmatica and got straight to work on building. So I started off doing this house kind of like layer by layer. So the first layer was just sort of cobble and mossy cobble. It has like a very cottage core overgrown style. It was actually inspired by this photo I saw on Pinterest. I also added a lot of shrubbery. Um, and then I also got ran up by pillagers in the process. So this is me, you know, fighting them off. Um, and then we worked on the front porch, or I guess it's technically like a balcony that'll be going off of the second layer. Then I started the chimney, which is made out of deep slate, which again, definitely one of my favorite building blocks in the game. I finished outlining like the first layer in the stripped spruce logs, you know, giving it that cottage core feel and then filled in the first layer of the floor of dark oak planks. Uh, and then we went on to the second floor. So I made this spiral staircase out of dark oak wood and then started with some detailing like lanterns, fences, slabs, upside down stairs, just, you know, making the house, uh, I was gonna say textural, I guess not textural, but have some, you know, dimension to it, some depth. Uh, then I went to work on my white concrete walls. I finished up the porch and added some more detailing in the back. Uh, and then we went on to do the boning on the upstairs level, like the different, I don't know how to explain it, like the pillars that go across that are supposed to kind of hold up the house, so to speak, you know, except this is Minecraft and gravity don't exist, but y'all know what I mean. Then I went and did more shrubbery, flower beds, window shutters, more things to make it pretty. I finally did the roof, which took me so long, but I'm really proud of it. I think this is one of the best roofs I've ever done in Minecraft. I started by outlining the roof with dark oak wood stairs, and then I like used brick as the roof. So that's what that looks like. Uh, I finished off the chimney and then I found these skeleton horses in the midst of my building. And I was like, I've never had a skeleton horse in Minecraft before. So I went ahead and killed the skeletons so that I could tame a skeleton horse. And here is my horse who was also unnamed. Let me know in the comments if you have name suggestions for me. But now let's go back to building. So <laughs> I added some more decorations like vines, flowers, um, glass panes finally for the windows. And I also, you know, terraformed the ground, added some more grass and greenery. And that is the finished exterior of the house. So I brought my second nameless cat, the one that did not get murdered by the creeper, uh, to come and admire my work. Uh, comment below if you have any cat name suggestions for me. <laughs> so we need names for the cat and we need na names for the skeleton horse. But then I went ahead and got straight to work on interior decorating. So this is what the interior looks like. It's honestly kind of empty, but I wanted to keep it kind of simple so I can add to it as I play this world more. So we have like, we walk into this sort of kitchen smelting area, which is super overgrown. There's a carpet. I have a little side table with a lantern on it and a plant, a little quaint living room area, cozy fireplace, armor stand. And I'm also gonna add some more bookshelves to this area later. But if we go upstairs on our beautiful dark oak spiral staircase, it's honestly pretty empty. There's like a bedroom. I actually use this, I installed this resource pack to make the bed textures different. And I think this is really cute. Um, and then next to the bedroom, there's just an empty room. So I added a lectern. And then there's the balcony area. So, 
yeah definitely really empty i thought i was going to use this upstairs level for enchanting but i don't think i'll have really space to do it in a way that makes sense so that's the interior and of course i can always add to it later so on day 100 i made a cake i took a bite to celebrate and last but certainly not least i made a jukebox i finally made use of one of my diamonds <laughs> I probably should have done that more throughout this gameplay, but listen, I was busy building. Um, but then I just popped in a music disc so that I can get the brand new Sound of Music achievement for playing a jukebox in a meadow biome. And even though we've technically already made it to day 100, um, I still wanted to add some final touches to the area. So I built this bridge over this ginormous like ravine cave thing. I didn't make a time lapse for this. Um, so cue, you know, the super speedy building montage. This is what it looked like at the end, sticking with, you know, the overgrown vibes. I also started on a wheat field, a bigger wheat field. And I mean, it also has other crops in here as well. Uh, I placed a fountain in the middle, which you will see in a little bit. But here's me just, you know, adding all the different plants and crops and, you know, making it pretty. I eventually want to expand this wheat field, like to wrap all the way around my house. I think that'll look super cool. And I added blades to my Moomoo Meadows windmill finally. So instead of using quartz, I ended up using smooth diorite because I didn't feel like going to the nether. Um, and I don't think it looks half bad. So now Moomoo Meadows is officially complete. I also ended up adding this pathway that connects my mini wheat field to my house. I literally have no idea where the footage of that went, but that's a thing now. <laughs> And that concludes my 100 days of Minecraft video. Here is a little tour of the world. Again, this is not meant to be like, you know, some other creators who literally do so much in their 100 days video. This is just a challenge I wanted to try for myself. And I'm really proud of what I was able to accomplish. I've never really done, you know, like plain builds or anything like that. So this is definitely really fun for me. Let me know in a comment what was your favorite thing that I did in this world. I think mine is definitely this house. This is probably the best house in Minecraft um, I have ever built. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know Minecraft like 1.19 is like around the corner <laughs> or coming out, you know, sometime soon. Um, and I'm just now uploading the, this 1.18 video. I definitely underestimated how much time this video would take me to create. But if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and drop in a comment below what your favorite thing I did in this world was. I still would love to do other sort of Minecraft gameplay videos that aren't just Let's Plays. So. We'll, we'll figure out how we're going to do that. Maybe we'll do streams every once in a while. But again, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mara, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.